the literature that if you see bone marrow edema on the MRI, then it is very rational to advise this patient to undergo a uh, high tibial or a realignment kind of osteotomy because this paper, and there are more papers like this, showed that 36% of patients who had medial lesions on the uh, MRI showed progression versus only 8% who had uh, no medial lesions. Or if you look at it the other way, out of the patients who showed progression radiologically on the medial side, 69% of them had uh, medial lesions. Therefore, bone marrow edema is a predictor of progression. And there is another paper which has looked at the same issue um, and has shown that bone marrow edema lesions regress with appropriate correction by a high tibial osteotomy. <laughs> so if alignment is the important thing, then the problem, what, why, is, why do people not do a high tibial osteotomy? And one of the reasons I have found is everybody is under this impression that high tibial osteotomy, that magic figure of seven years or eight years, you do it and then patient is good for eight years and seven years and eight years, and after that patient will get pain again. But that's just not true. That's what you learned do your, during your residency. That's what Coventry wrote in 1971. Coventry has written other papers after that, which many of us have not read. If you look at some of the papers about long-term follow-up of a high tibial osteotomy, starting from somewhere around 99. Now, note that if these people have done a long-term follow-up in 99, these surgeries have been done uh, much earlier with techniques which were less, relatively less precise. Even with that kind of technique, if the patient, um, if they chose the patient properly, that is an age of more than 50 years uh, without a lateral, uh, sorry, an age less than 50 years without a lateral thrust, um, with appropriate correction of valgus, they found an 80% survivorship at 10 years. So this is not the 7 or 8 years that you commonly think of. If you do it correctly, if you choose your patient properly, you can get 8 out of 10 patients still doing well at the end of 10 years. A more recent paper with relatively more modern methods of uh, calculation and fixation, where they looked at 76 osteotomies, where they did a closing wedge with internal fixation. And the end point was quite a strict end point. It was not only arthroplasty or a high uh, hospital for special surgery score of less than 70, but also dissatisfaction with the result of the surgery. Any of these three factors were counted as a failure. With a mean follow-up of 10 years, they found 90% survivorship at 10 years 9 out of 10 patients still doing well at 10 years if the proper angle was obtained. So your survivorship with a high tibial osteotomy is rivaling that which your arthroplasty surgeons will talk about. But one of the best papers that I would recommend anyone who is interested in this should read is a long term follow up of 15 to 28 years. That is a minimum follow up of 15 years. <laughs> and what they counted as failure was either a revision to TKR which happened in 12 knees or moderate pain which happened in 3 knees in 2 patients. At a minimum of 15 years follow up, 93% of patients could walk more than 1 kilometer without pain. And if you look at survivorship figures, the survivorship was 97.8% at 5 years, but important thing is again 93.2% at 15 years. So most of the papers which talk of a long term follow up of a high table osteotomy talk of figures in 80% plus survivorship at 10 years if the osteotomy has been done right. So the failure of an osteotomy is not the failure of the osteotomy, the failure is a failure to obtain a correct angle. And then the other question which everyone wonders is, yeah, we will do the osteotomy, but the cartilage which is worn out, what happens to that? Does the cartilage regenerate? And again, these are pictures from Koshino's 
um, article in the journal knee, you will see bare areas of bone, bare areas of bone. So, a bare area of bone re-covered with cartilage. True, this is not perfect highline cartilage. This is a fibrocartilage, which is somewhat similar to um, highline cartilage, but cartilage without any microfracture, without any abrasion, without any drilling, regenerates or fills up the gap with just realignment. The other picture, again, cartilage regenerates. So it is not impossible that cartilage can regenerate. And he has in fact shown an 80 percent, uh, close to an 80 percent uh, rate of regeneration of the cartilage and etc, etc. There's, there's a lot of pa other papers which if you are interested, you can look through. All of them talk of a precise restoration of the valgus angle. Therefore, I believe that virus is detrimental and that is the main thing that causes the problem. Accuracy in planning and accuracy in your correction is the key to a long-term success. And the appropriate valgus is a very narrow range of 3 to 16. No more can you use older sort of trial and error methods that, okay, this seems to be a little less, let's may give him into extra, a little extra valgus, because that is as irrational as keeping it in varus. If keeping it in varus is causing medial arthritis, giving him extra valgus is going to cause a lateral arthritis somewhere down the line. So the range that you have of correction is extremely um, narrow. And if I am going to talk to patients about doing an osteotomy at a younger age or at an earlier time, I should also remember that however optimistic I may be about doing the osteotomy and the long-term results, still if that patient lives to 65, 70, that patient is still going to require a knee replacement. So whatever I do has to be compatible with a future total knee replacement. And that is an area where traditional osteotomies tend to have a little bit of problem with uh, future total knee replacement, uh, conversion to a future total knee replacement. <laughs> so you should be able to identify by uh, various methods of planning whether the cause of the deformity is in the femur, in the tibia, or in the uh, ligament, just due to ligament laxity. And there are some patients, if you do valgus varus stress x-rays and full length x-rays, you will find that the angles in the femur and the tibia are okay. It's only the lateral ligament which is lax. And these patients, give, you know, doing an x-ray under uh, valgus stress restores the alignment beautifully. So this kind of patient really needs only a ligament. Now, if this patient undergoes a high table osteotomy, this is a day one failure. So if you don't treat the proper cause, you cannot blame the operation. Our current approach, of course, is, like I said, very fatalistic. One of the common excuses is patients don't buy the surgery. I say the surgeon doesn't sell it well enough. Surgeon will be able to sell a surgery only when he himself is convinced. When you talk to patients about doing a DHS, they buy it fairly easily. When you talk to them about doing a femur nailing, they buy it fairly easily because you yourself are convinced that yes, this is the right thing to do. So until you are convinced that doing an osteotomy is the correct approach, I don't think you will be able to 